Morning Rebels. As you can see, I am solo this week, and that's because Lucienne is away at a wedding. She will be back with us next week, so I figured today I would do this particular video in my pajamas because that gives you an idea of sort of what my regular day looks like, which means um, pajamas at 10 in the morning because I usually start working before I actually start getting ready for the day. So today, uh, what I'd like to talk to you about is my writing process, specifically storyboarding. Okay, so basically, uh, I feel like a newbie writer still. Um, when you think about it, I've had one book published and one is about to be published, but before those two books, I had only written one book. So I still feel like I'm figuring out this process, quite honestly, and that I don't have a handle on it yet. So I'm constantly looking for ways to sort of streamline and make better my process. So one of the things that I sort of fell on last year when I was on tour, or not last year, but last spring, when I was on tour with uh, the YA Chicks, was um, Save the Cat, which is a screenwriting book, and Jessica Brody is a huge proponent of Save the Cat. She writes the Unforgotten, Unremembered series, and she talked to me about it, and it just made so much sense that I went running out after I talked to her and bought the Save the Cat book, and I'm so glad that I did because it started me on a new path, and that is the storyboarding that I told you about, and uh, it's helping me. And so I've started using this particular process of storyboarding on all the novels that I'm writing, and it does really help. I am not somebody who sticks like hardcore to a plan. I want to really badly because I'm very type A. So I keep thinking like if I organize everything into a little ball, I'll be able to keep it all tight and controlled. But once I start writing, that sort of just goes out the window. What I like about the storyboarding idea is that it's little index cards and they're held on with, you know, the little tacks, but they are easy to take on and off. So if I decide that I don't like a scene or I've started writing and all of a sudden the story veers off in a different direction, I can adjust the board to match what's happening with the writing. And it just keeps me sort of not necessarily on the same path, but it just helps to keep me focused over time so that I don't, you know, sort of lose my way. Because sometimes when you're writing, you have to stop. Maybe you have a vacation, maybe you have, you know, a family thing that goes on. And so sometimes when that happens, it's hard to get back into the story. But with a storyboard, it's easy because all the scenes are there. So you kind of know where you left off and where you need to go next, which is great. So it makes it easier, at least for me, to kind of jump back in when it's time to jump back in. All right. So let's talk about what exactly the storyboard is. All right, a storyboard is basically a map for your story. I have mine, as you can see, sort of blocked off with green tape into four columns, horizontal, or actually rows, it wouldn't be columns, right? So four rows, you can tell it's still early and that I'm totally exhausted. Oh, summertime with the kids home and like late night writing, my brain is just, <laughs> but anyway, four rows, and the first row would represent act one of the story. The last row is act three, and the two in the middle are both act two because act two is where most of your activity happens. It's that big chunky middle of the story. So it gets its two rows. But basically I take every scene that I think is gonna happen in the story and I put it up on this board. And they don't always stay in the same order. When I first start out, I'm just kind of brainstorming like what kinds of scenes do I think will be in the story? And I put them on index cards and I put them up on the board. Now one way that Save the Cat helped me is it kind of gives you a guide of what kinds of scenes or what kinds of beats, as Blake Snyder, the guy who wrote this, would call it, uh, need to be in a good story to make sure that the plot is strong. And so one of those things, for example, is, uh, is your opening image. You have to have some sort of opening image and it's great if the opening image mirrors or sort of parallels your closing image. That somehow you're seeing the character, how they started the story and then how they leave off at the end and both of those scenes sort of mirror or parallel each other. So I know that I have to start with that opening image and I know that at the end I'm gonna have a closing image and that I somehow want them to parallel and to really illustrate how the characters changed in some way. All right, so to give you an idea of some of the other things that you have to hit, according to Blake Snyder, I'm gonna to have to read these off because I can't remember them because my brain is still not working. Uh, you need the opening image, you need a theme stated, sort of like what is it that you're trying to say in the story? And it doesn't have to be said like outright where you know, you're know you hitting us over the head like, okay, um, you know, love is better than money or whatever that thesis statement is. It's just more or less that you're letting us know, you know, kind of what you're exploring in the novel, like what kinds of feelings or what kinds of things 
and gated, it would be, you know, do you follow or do you trust your own instincts? That's kind of the thesis statement there. And, and what are you willing to do in order to be true to yourself? So that would be sort of my thesis statement. And I don't come right out and say it. I just have a character in passing sort of talk about those kinds of feelings, but not in an obvious way where I'm teaching someone. So And then after the debate, you have the break into act two. And that's when you go from the opening of the book, like kind of where we are, who we're talking to and dealing with, and sort of what's happening to them, to that catalyst moment when they break off and start this new journey. And that's that break into two, where they're starting into the meat of the book and sort of what they're doing in this story. Um, <clears throat> After you have the break into act two, you have a B story, and that's usually like this quiet moment when you have this sort of parallel story that's taking place in conjunction with your story. Usually that's like a love story. Uh, could be, though, that it's like a relationship between a mother and daughter that you talk about in depth a little bit more, or best friends, but it's something that sort of helps the story along, but also is this sort of separate thing within the story, a subplot, and you can have several of these. Uh, sometimes I have several different, it depends on if there's an ensemble piece that I'm doing or if there's two characters that are telling the story, there might be two of these. Um, after that you have the midpoint and that's when things start to change. There's either like a false victory or there's a false defeat. Some way that you can see that the story's starting to get more serious and about that time is when the bad guys close in. So that's when you have sort of this confrontation with the villain or at least some sort of inkling that it's going to be a problem that this person is now making it tougher on your hero. You have after that a scene that sort of depicts your hero at an all is lost moment when everything gets very dark. And along with that moment, you have the dark night of the soul, which is when your hero really doubts that they are able to sort of make it through the story or do what it is that they need to do to get to their happy ending, right? This book sort of explains why you're doing what you're doing and what people psychologically as they're reading or watching a movie kind of need to have happen. All of these sort of touch points within the movie or the novel that need to happen for them to feel good about the story or to like it or to stay engaged. Now obviously this says nothing about your style of writing or your technique. This is more just about solidly plotting your book. And so, you know, that stuff comes later and that's part of uh, another part of craft. But as far as storyboarding goes, I highly recommend it. It's helped save my butt many times. Especially when you talk about writing a book on proposal, which is something that once you're published you tend to do. If you do your storyboard, then you have sort of what you can use for your proposal. You have that outline right there. And for me, I need to visually see it. I, there's something tactile that I need. I have to have that feeling thing and the seeing like in person instead of on the computer that helps me. You could probably do this on your computer. I know Scrivener has like that, what, post-it note board or clipboard or whatever that's very similar. It's the same kind of thing. So use what's going to work for you. If you're really tech savvy, that's probably the way to go. If you're old school like me, then a bulletin board works great. You can also use a roll of paper. I know Christina Farley uses like a long sheet of, of rolled out paper and she sort of separates hers out, uh, not necessarily in exactly the same way, but it's still a form of storyboarding. But I recommend trying it, at least for one novel, to see if it will work for you. Because I know that when it comes to writing any kind of book, it's good to have a plan. And it will make you feel less anxious about that middle if you at least can see where your beginning and end are and kind of feel your way through that middle when it's not feeling your way through a scene that takes you three days to write. It's just sitting and writing one index card, which just takes a few minutes. All right, so that was sort of a scattered and early morning in my pajamas kind of explanation of what storyboarding is. Um, I hope you check out the book, Save the Cat. I'm glad Jessica Brody told me about it. I will be forever grateful to her for that. And uh, let me know if you do, or let me know if you've already been doing this and how it's helped you. I'd love to see it in the comments. Till next time, Rebels. Bye.